Hello everyone and welcome to the sideboard at the Kansas City Standard Open. I'm Glenn Jones, your event coverage coordinator. I'm here with Dave Thomas. What's up? World renowned founder, sorry, solar flare expert. No, no, Wendy's is good. Wendy's, Wendy's is, is good? good? All right. Well, Dave's back at it again with Solar Flare. It's an archetype you uh, made a lot of waves playing uh, a few months ago, like 10-ish, I think, Yeah, about. 10 months ago. And uh, back in action shortly yep. before we're going to lose a lot of the pieces in rotation. Yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed playing the deck, and the, the metagame's kind of prepared itself again to where uh, Dave Judgment decks are good. Sure. So this is this is a really good Dave Judgment deck. I mean, it's classic Dave Judgment, play a fatty and clean up, so. Tap out style control. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just run down the deck list and how okay. it's changed. A lot of the elements are the same. You're going to recognize the Sun Titans. You've diminished the Phantasmal Lineage a little. A lot of actually, people run tons of them. Yeah, I, actually, I, I've always played two. Uh, threes, okay. I've tried three in the main. Three is really good, but I just really haven't uh, fine-tuned the list to where, uh, where I want the third over other cards yet. Okay. So the third one is wanted, but no room is found yet. No room is found. So if you, perchance, have an open slot base on your list, Phantasmal Lineage might be where you want to start. You have gone down to one Liliana. Yeah, Liliana has been pr pretty bad against. It's pretty bad against a lot of the decks. Uh, I never don't want her. Uh, whenever she shows up, she's pretty good. She's really good at, uh, against Geist of Saint Trap. She's really good against the Rug Grant decks because she preemptives a turn four Titan. Mm -hmm. uh, since the only things they really play are uh, Solemns, you can easily just get the Titan uh, with them since they don't have like a, a plethora of Ink Moth Nexus. Yeah, they can't defend. Yeah, so they can't defend. So she she can generally take down one or two Titans pretty handily. Uh, the bullet on barrel rights is nothing new, obviously, yeah. but uh, how's the bullet Elstorm in play? Elstorm, no, I've all, out, yeah, so. I actually leave that in against almost everything. I wanna, uh, I've want i wanted to uh, sideboard a second one, maybe main deck a second wow. one. It blows out so many of the decks in this <laughs> format, it's just unbelievable. So, But it, she, she does cost seven, so without the barrel rights, it does clutter the hand a lot. That makes sense. So one's, one's always good. We've got a new card from M13 in the mix, Augur Bolas, which is a personal favorite of mine. That card does a lot of work. Uh, the, the, one of the reasons I came back to this deck for Augur Bolas, it reminded me of Court and I mm -hmm. wanted to see if it could function like it. And it, and it. and it does similar things. Obviously, you can't get a land, but it fills the curve better, So uh, especially with Lingering Souls and Forbidden Alchemy. So yep. it really digs for those cards, uh, cards you need, or Day of Judgment. Yeah. One of the uh, aspects of this deck that I always actually found a little awkward was the old version of it. I know that we don't like comparing it to yeah. uh, old Solar Flare yeah. that much, but that version had you know Signets, in addition to like compulsive research and really yeah. had stuff to do on its turns like it was a tap out stock control deck that could just constantly do things but when i was playing like this kind of solar yeah. flare i always found myself kind of dirtling on turn yeah, two that was one of the problems yeah. so think twice is not my jam i'm sure there are people out there who love casting a think twice that's not me uh, auger bolus though auger bolus is sweet i mean i think i only have 20 like 20 instants and sorceries but that's literally statistically the minimum number you need yeah. to get one so i mean i do whiff a couple times but he he, do, he carries his weight he blocks Strangle Root, guys. He blocks Thalia, which is really important. I've loved him against zombies, and yeah. Thalia is also yeah. very relevant. He's very good against zombies, because they don't want to kill him. Yep. <laughs> the uh, Forbidden Alchemies are a must, obviously. We yeah. have four of those, including the special foil I from uh, FNM. Best right. card. It's nice art. Uh, moving on, we've got four Ponder, four Lingering Souls. We talked a little bit about Lingering Souls already. Yeah. You just want four to get the value. Right? Yeah, you, you really, like, uh, if you don't have a Day of Judgment uh, and, and you're trying to get to the later game, you need, sometimes you need something to slow the beating, but you can also become the beatdown. If someone has a slow ga game plan and you mana leak or uh, go for the throw of their creature and they don't have any more gas, you can become the beatdown, which is really important. Okay. It's really good for time management, though. You've also got the full, well, I shouldn't say full, but one shy of the full, three Oblivion Rings. Yeah, I've, I've never been disappointed with that card. Uh, okay. I don't want to lose the Sword of War and Peace. hate that card. Uh, with Lingering Souls, you're, you're yeah. really weak to it. Uh, Augur helps with Sword of War and Peace, actually, by chump blocking and letting mm -hmm. you uh, untap and O-Ring it. But uh, O-Ring removes Stranger Root, guys. I mean, it, well, it kills anything. And then it does the Angel of Despair pseudo thing with the Sun Titan. Yeah. So I've always been a fan of it. So, never gone down. I've been getting more and more impressed by Oblivion Ring. I think it's going to start showing up in more sideboards. It's awkward because a lot of the decks that want Oblivion Ring are trying to fit in stuff like Delver and Augur Bowl yeah. also, so you can't really afford the slots, but the card itself is actually just very it's good. It's just really good right now. The lands are nothing too unusual. I noticed that you did something I've liked doing recently with these control decks, which is hedging on the uh, chapels and fortress style lands yeah. more so than the Scars yeah. duels. The Scars duels are really important. Uh, it's, it's, it allows you to keep uh, non-basic land uh, heavy hands. Like you can keep like t two of these in, in, a, in a scars land mm -hmm. and, and be fine because uh, it fills fills your curve better. Like, but uh, the, I specifically like dark six swords over secret coast because after board uh, you get dead weight and it sets up for turn three Liliana and turn two go for the throat better than uh, uh, drawn catacomb. I wholeheartedly agree. I was running a very similar split in an Espelist I played at uh, SCGDC, just hedging on these lands. 
So that's Dave's main deck. Nothing too crazy, but Solar Flare back in action. Did you start off with a win in yeah, the tournament? Yeah, I started off with a win against uh, Niagara. What? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's just the match you want to play against, yep. a, a creature deck. and doesn't even have pod to like, nope, threaten he didn't a long have game, pod. just kill all the guys mm -hmm. and then play a big guy. Well, we are going to talk a little bit about Dave's sideboard. It's mostly conventional stuff, but we have a few cards that are a little unusual. I'm going to start with the one that's closest to uh, the normal range, shall we say, with Sever the Bloodline. Yeah, Sever the Bloodline's basically like a four Celestial Purge that can be used against uh, big creatures and small creatures. Like, uh, I like it against Ramp because you can get uh, multiple Titans if, if they do something like that. Because uh, some of them will, like, uh, uh, Primeval Titan image in, uh, in yeah. the same turn. And that's actually a really good answer to that. Uh, it's better than Day of Judgment because it doesn't kill my uh, Lingering Souls, and, yep. and I don't really care. Uh, it was a fourth Day of Judgment until Sever just started proving better when I started trying it. It's good against uh, Gravecrawler, Drawls Messengers, uh, Strangaroo guys. So it's it, it's basically really good utility. I can imagine Sever just being very good right now, especially yeah. against these zombie pod decks yeah. that are trying to do the whole make a bunch of messenger tricks. Like it's Removing is really important so you don't die to Blood Artist because... Yep. That's annoying. <laughs> You've also got a Singleton Stony Silence, which obviously you can get into the bin with like yeah. an alchemy or something, and your Sun Titan can bring it back. It was proving better than uh, uh, Divine Offering. Uh, the Sun Titan thing's a plus, but I needed it specifically against uh, Trading Post decks. Uh, they are oh. better, they're better long game than, we, uh, than this deck that is. That makes sense. So, uh, like, uh, most of the Trading Post decks uh, aren't white that I've seen, or don't, don't have that many Obliterings, and uh, they'll blow them a lot early on a Planeswalker or uh, a Sun Titan. So if I can land the Stony Silence uh, when we start going late, it, it usually just shuts them down. Shuts they them just stop down. having yeah. anything to do? Yeah, pretty much. And the last one is really spicy, my personal favorite of the list, Nevermore. It's it's a better memory side. Uh, it's, this deck's already good against Ramp, uh, but uh, in, in, the, uh, in games two and three, they have uh, four, usually some of them have four, uh, full four Cavern of Souls. So the counter spells won't stop the turn four Titan. On the draw, you can play Nevermore named Primeval Titan, and it stops it. Uh, that's that's all you need to do. Uh, it's it's also good against other control decks because uh, other like other control decks have to keep in their day of judgments uh, type things. It's good against planeswalkers. You can just preempt planeswalkers. So there uh, there there are lots of uh, useful things for it. It's not tested 100 percent, but in theory it, it seems like it it could work in this. Sure. You can return it with Sun Titan too. One of the cards that is missing from the list that doesn't always get played in these kind of decks, but has seen played in some, is Snapcaster Mage. Uh, he's kind of fallen out of favor. Snapcaster, uh, in my opinion, is filling the role of Lingering Souls uh, okay. in, uh, in the early games. Usually, since uh, the earlier versions of this deck play Think Twice instead of Ponder, you never, you sometimes uh, flash back to Now Come Here Manly, but usually you're doing like Go for the Throat to, uh, yeah. to, to buy tempo, to buy time, to set up for your late game. And Lingering Souls does a better job, I think, of that. Uh, there are a lot of cute things you can do with Snapcaster Mage. Sure. But I, I don't think he's necessary anymore in this style of deck, since uh, you're not always going to get full value out of him. Like, like saying, Delver. I'm perfectly willing to take your word on it. <laughs> All right, uh, it's Dave. He's off to a good start in the Standard Open. That's the end of our deck tech on Solar Flare. Maybe you want to try it out at FNAF.